they would kidnap you. Like on top of that, like not even the Deltas, but like if the Qs, which was the brother for uh, fraternity of us, caught us, they could kidnap us. And then they would have to call your license. They would have to come get you. Like they could do whatever. Melissa, thank you so much for joining tonight. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited, like very excited. Um, it's really been a long time coming. So thank yeah. you for inviting me on here. And we just hope for the Lord to just be completely glorified throughout all of this. Come on, thanks. <sighs> but ultimately, this is for the edifying of the body. And hopefully we can give people who may be in a fraternity or sorority a different perspective or those who are considering joining a fraternity or sorority a different perspective. So be humble. You know what I'm saying? Like, because... <laughs> What we're talking about is very controversial, and it has been right. online. Like, I think people have really been digging into this topic the last maybe eight to ten years. It's, like, really picked up some steam, and a lot of people are, like, jumping ship and stuff. So, yeah, this it might get a little bit heated, but it's all right. Y'all still y'all still got to love us, because if Here. you don't love us, then you don't love God. Right. <laughs> all all right, y'all better show some love, you know, because you're founded on Christian principles. So. Thank you. That part. So. <laughs> that part. That part. All right, y'all. So this is Melissa. And Melissa reached out to me. Me and her have been talking online now for what, maybe about a year? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And I don't think I knew that you were um, an ex-Delta until recently. I used to be one of those people that was like, why are everybody making these videos? Like, this is stupid. <laughs> it's not demonic. It's none of that. Like, what are they talking about? They this, that, and the third. That's crazy. That's that's you. I don't know why I was that same yeah. person doing all of that. All of that. And so it's so crazy to see it on the other side. So I'm really hoping to bring clarity, like, to people. Why these videos are made. Why people do this. Um, but not to necessarily, like, just bash everything. But, yeah. What would you say to someone? Because I can already, I can hear it right now in the spirit realm. I'm, I'm being a little facetious now. But for people who say, well, you wanted to denounce, that's just you. Why don't you just keep that to yourself and not try to make other people feel bad about their affiliations with it? Why do you think it's important to talk about it? Well, it is, I think, just taking it all back to being a Christian. So when I became born again, just in general, right? I look at it like there is absolutely no way that you can claim salvation in Jesus Christ, yet you don't seek to see other people saved. Mm -hmm. So if the Lord has called me out of something and not only called me out of it, but he extremely showed me why this was an issue and why these were problems, why wouldn't you share that with other people? Why would you sit there and let your brother or your sister be in a circumstance or a situation that could cause their soul to be in jeopardy of not being with the Lord, you know? And on top of that, majority of us made these decisions when we were 17, 18, or 19. I pledged when I was 18, you know what I mean? So the issue is, it's like a lot of times, you know, there's a lot of deception with these things and you're excited. I know for me, majority of my family was Greek. So yes, it is a, I denounce as well, but at the same time, it's no different than the Great Commission. The same time when we become Christians, we now are commanded to go ye out into the world and to share the gospel to all nations. So if there is anything that I came out of, and not even just came out of, I also was a big part of influencing other people to join, right? <laughs> so if my work was in influencing other people to join the sorority, why would I not give my life now to influence other people to not do the things that I've done? And I've been very vocal in general about my testimony, whether it's been abortions, sin in general, fornication. If I can call people out of that because I was one of the main people who did that, that's my goal. Ooh, that's, that's the biggest good. goal. Yeah. That's good. And you know what? We can find those principles in the scriptures. So for anybody who's not like a Bible scholar, that's okay. We got some verses for you to look up. The first one is Ephesians 5. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 5, 8 says, walk as children of light for the fruit of the light results in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, discerning what is pleasing to the Lord. And then if you go to verse nine, it says, don't participate in the fruitless works of darkness, but instead expose them. So that's what we're doing tonight, exposing right. things that are not godly. 
And then you talked about the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 19. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. Amen. So Christianity has never been a, a belief system where you get it and then you keep it to yourself and you don't want to share it with nobody else. That's the antithesis of Christianity. <laughs> we're supposed to go out and compel people to come in. So praise the Lord. That's what we're doing tonight. Amen. I'm, ex Amen. I'm excited. <laughs> Amen. And we're going to go too. into it. We're going to go into it, y'all. Yeah. We're going to yeah. go into it. So let's, let's go way back from before you even got to college. Did you grow up in a Christian household? Yes or no? No. No. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> let's, just, <laughs> let's, just, <laughs> let's just start it there. Okay. So no, I did, I did not grow up Christian. Um, not in the least bit. I believe that some of my family would have stated that they were Christian, but absolutely nobody obeyed the bible you know um maybe on like you know easter and christmas <laughs> y'all go up in there <laughs> it was that kind of situation um so that was more so on my mom's side but on my dad's side it was a whole religious cult um and it, it that won't go super deep because i'll share my testimony on that with another thing but um basically she taught us totally against church totally against Christians, totally against anything. As a matter of fact, when I um, went to join Delta, when we did majority of our ceremonies and stuff in a church, I almost didn't go just because the stuff was in a church, which is really, <laughs> which is really interesting. So I didn't grow up with any sort of strict uh, Christian background. As a matter of fact, when I dated certain guys, if they would try to invite me to church, I would break up with them. Uh, friends knew not to try to invite me to church because I wasn't with it. I thought everybody was a bunch of hypocrites. Don't come over here. That's You do what's best for you. Basically, like a lot of people telling me what the same thing that they're telling me on this live. Okay, that's good for you, but don't come over here with that. That's how I was. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I was in regards to um, wow. Christianity. So no, I wasn't a Christian. And when you got to college, like, did you, were you already exposed to Greek life? Because when I got to college... I, nobody in my family was Greek, at least not my immediate family. So I was completely like, like, what is this? I don't understand the culture. I haven't seen a few episodes of a different world. But other than that, like, I don't know what it means to be in a black fraternity or sorority. So was right. that your story? or Girl, no. I, let me tell you something. Since I came out of the womb, I was groomed to be a Delta. Since I, when I came out of the the, the womb, Okay, it goes as far back to my grandfather that was on my mother's side. He was a mason and a shriner. And then my mother, um, she was a Delta. She pledged a Spellman. My auntie, my mother's sister, a Delta. She pledged a Spellman. My brother, he's a Q. He pledged at Morehouse. Like, I grew up in, in the pageants and, and everything that you had. So I knew going to college. As a matter of fact, I chose a college based upon them having an active chapter of Delta Sigma Theta. So I, I just knew you couldn't tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. I was throwing up the sign when I was six. <laughs> so uh, that was me. <laughs> Do you think it's easier to get in, like if you've been groomed for it versus people who just like learn about it once they get to college? Um, I think it really depends. You know, it depends on what chapter you go to. I mean, if you have family members what you, and, and they pledge before you, you're called legacy. Right, because that means like you're continuing the legacy and joining the organization. So when you go through the actual like above ground process, the national process, your packet is like looked at like a little bit more than other people. But to be honest with you, it really depends on the, the um, how do you say, the reputation you have with those who are already members who are on the campus. That's, okay. yeah. If, if they not feeling you, <laughs> Like, <laughs> you ain't <getting> it. <laughs> if we wasn't feeling you, uh, <laughs> it didn't matter if your whole family nah. was your girl, so you wasn't gonna get in. No, it was no, it, I'm, I'm not gonna use, I was gonna say it was, they, they would have took Barabbas over you. It was that type of, <laughs> 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 they wasn't taking you. <laughs> oh so, yeah. man. Okay. All right. And so what, what college did you end up pledging Delta at? So I went to Savannah State University and our chapter name was Delta Nu. Mm -hmm. what year did you cross i crossed in spring 2007 so yes i'm up there <laughs> so she's like, I'm, I'm, I'm not no newbie i didn't cross last semester and come out now i'm talking about it she's like no nah, nah, like a while ago like no nah, we cross cross <laughs> like <laughs> yes <laughs> so, so yes being, in spring 2007 yeah 
being that most of the women in your family who you looked up to were deltas, like was that that was the sorority you knew you were gonna be in, or was like did you ever yeah. consider okay, so like there was never potential for you to join anything else? Never. <laughs> <laughs> and if I was, they wasn't even let me back in the house. They weren't even let me in the family. <laughs> like, nah. I mean, of course, they would have still loved me, but it it would have been nothing but shade. So yeah. all I grew up was seeing that. I grew up seeing my mom's friends. Everybody surrounded her. Her closest people were all Deltas. So I never even, yep, them Jabberwock days, just what she said <laughs> in the comments. Jabberwock was, it, it's basically like for for young kids and you would join, it's like a pageant and Delta yeah. through that. So um, yes, I, everybody was a Delta. <laughs> so no, nah, it wasn't an option. Nope. So walk us through like the process from mm -hmm. the very beginning. When I say, I mean like even before you are selected, what does someone yep. have to do to even start the process of getting into a, a Greek letter organization? <sighs> Ciao. <laughs> First of all, let's say, like, it's so competitive. Like, um, especially if you go to an HBCU, because um, let's just say, I will say it like this. We had, like, 400, close to 400 girls that showed up to the rush. That's where you go and you get information on the sorority and you, you express your interest and want to join. So out of that, they picked 38 of us. So it's very competitive. So I would say by the time you get on the yard, like when you become a freshman, um, you're already trying to do different different organizations just so your packet could look good. So they want people who do a bunch of community service. They want people who do, um, who are involved on the campus. It's just, honestly, you could care less about the organization that you are part of as long as you join it. So uh, for me, I was freshman class president. I was um, I was um, in SGA. I was on a dance team. I had a bunch of community service. I was pretty popular. And from that point, when you get on the yard, they express like how your reputation needs to be. Like, you know, so you don't need to be talking to none of the big sisters' boyfriends or <laughs> like you don't need to be out here like being fast or doing anything like that um and you need to show interest so what interest looks like is you have to go to every single every single event they have on campus you have to go on top of that every time you see them you have to speak you have to just go out of your way it's almost like worship like you have mm -hmm. to literally like bow down to them it that's how you show your interest and so to be honest with you before they even have the rush they normally know who they're going to pick to be on the line anyway mm -hmm. like because of how people have showed their interest. So that's how that process went. Would you say like the initial meeting is intimidating or is it kind of like, you know, it's just business. Like anybody can come. It's not like a scary type of thing or. No, nah, it's, it's definitely intimidating because it's an idol. Like you want it so bad. Like mm -hmm. people go through grave lengths to be in a sorority. Like it's an idol. Like, especially like me, I was groomed in it since I was a child. So that was my laser focus when I got on, like one of, one of the biggest accomplishments was not even graduating. It was the fact that I crossed and I pledged. You know what I mean? So it, when you think of it in that way, in that way, it's like, it's an idol. And we know even in biblical times, just in general, like anything that's an idol in your life, you do anything to attain it, anything. It doesn't matter if it's a relationship, if it's a job, you have like gurus getting over here talking about how much they slave to work wherever they're working. It's like you're going to go out of your way to just do it. It's a it's a complete idol. So, yeah, it's very intimidating. And they know it's intimidating because they it's like we have you have the edge. They want something that you want. So people abuse that like they they really abuse that. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So they keep asking this the live being recorded. <laughs> Okay, it, it will be available as long as I don't mess anything up. But <laughs> once the live ends, it should be available on my page afterwards. So if y'all miss the beginning, then you'll be you'll be good. Um, so once you found out that you were in, first of all, how did you find out? Because I know some people like they they say there's like this call that you get, and you're like, oh my gosh, is that how it was for you? Or is that like yes? A so yes, so it they do it two ways. They send a letter to like your campus mailbox, but then they also call you 
and will let you know that you um, were chosen to be on the line. And when you get that letter, you have to be at a specific place at a specific time and you have to be dressed in a specific way. And when you go to that meeting, that meeting is where you meet your line, line sisters. So these are the people who you're gonna actually be online with. So you meet them there in that meeting. And then on top of that, you, you know, you're there with the big sisters and um, even the advisors who are the ones who advise over the chapter, they're normally like older Deltas who are a part of a, um, of a grad chapter. And they're the ones who oversee the collegiate chapter. So you're there and then they tell you about what's about to take place. They, they let you know 500 times that you are not a Delta yet. Um, <laughs> they, <laughs> and it's just, it's super intimidating because especially for somebody like me, um, I went through an underground process. So this wasn't just like a, oh, we meet and it's, and it's great. Like we knew that it was about to go down. Like, mm -hmm. and when I mean go down, that means hazing. Like we knew it was, and, and you're ready for it. As a matter of fact, you wear it like a badge of honor. Like you ready to go get beat up <laughs> just to be in an organization or to go get degraded a million times just to be in an organization. Like you wear it in that type of way. So yeah. And how many people did you say you crossed with? How many LSs did you It was 38 of us. It was Were 38. all 38 Hayes? Everybody. My whole mm -hmm. line went through the process. Um, and that was a conversation we had from the start, like either everybody going down, everybody getting down, or everybody. <laughs> but yeah, nah, all, all 38 went through the process. Yes. So say somebody said, I don't want it. I don't want a haze. I just want to sign my piece of paper, get in, mm -hmm. wear the letters, whatever. Like, is that an option? And it so is an option, but it's a, it's a horrible option, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because, you know, at that point, you know, we're going to politely let you off on the side of the road. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? God bless you, that kind of that kind of vibe. And nobody's going to mess with you. Like, nobody's going to talk to you. It, it This sisterhood ends there because it's it, it thrives on the fact that you're aligned, so you're one. You do everything as one. So for someone to make a decision like that, it, to them it shows that you're not sisterly you know what i mean and mm -hmm. you don't care about everybody else we all in this together type of vibe it's it's, it's really gang vibes it just is <laughs> but that's that's kind of what it is like if you 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 have that choice nobody can force you and nobody wants to force you because if we do force you you can snitch on all of us mm -hmm. so everybody will kind of play nice with you but after you cross over Everybody will know that, and, and that term for that is called paper, it, or in Delta land is called cat, you was cat. So <laughs> that's what they would call it. Like you was scary, you know, nobody, you, nobody would respect you or anything like that. So I watched a few of the, um, the Delta step shows online, or maybe it's yard shows or whatever. And like, there's a skit that they, they do a mm -hmm. lot. And it's like, somebody asks, oh, Delta, how can I sign up? And they're like, sign up. Did you ever, did y'all ever do that routine at your school? I think that is so funny. No, nah, I ain't never heard of that. <laughs> they were like, sign up. Like, they know sign nah. up over here. So I, that's just funny to me because a lot of people say, we don't haze, we don't haze. But then in the yard shows and stuff, they like flat out admit, we do haze. So it's like. Oh, well, yeah, you got to say that, though. You got to say mm -hmm. that. It's, it's like a running joke because you can get, you can go to jail. Like everything mm -hmm. that I, and I'm not even talking from the standpoint of everything that was done to me just so everybody can listen on this live. I'm also talking from the standpoint of everything I did to other people. You know what I mean? And that's that's the hope of sharing this, but like you can go to jail, even from the stuff that I'm stating on, like I can go to jail. You know what I mean? For the stuff that I did to other people because hazing is illegal in general. Mm -hmm. So of course you're gonna say that. Like you're gonna say no, like who would admit that they're, ha they're, they're hazing? Like you, yeah you finna be in jail like that's yeah that's what it is so yeah it's dangerous i don't i'm assuming most people know what hate what hazing is but for anybody who may or may mm -hmm. not it's pretty much well maybe i should let you define what hazing is you want to and then give us some examples of what hazing looked like for you yeah i sure can and i can just kind of express like from the day that we went and we met one another just kind of like what that process looked like and i want I really want everybody, especially if you're a part of a sorority or fraternity to really listen. You know what I mean? Especially people that's on this live, y'all went to school with me. Like y'all know, like I, 
y'all know the type of person that I was. You know the lifestyle that I led. You know how much I was so into Delta. So for me to make a decision and for God to call me out, that was a big deal. And I really, really, really want you to listen to the stuff that I'm about to say and I'm about to name. Now, I can't speak on behalf of my line sister, so I'm speaking on behalf of me. And I just want that to be the case. But like when I when I when we go through these things, I want you to really, really ask yourself, how does any of this have to do with with Christ? How does anything have to do with being a Christian? Like how in the world can you sit and justify this to mean love? Like how in the world can you just like how? How would you believe that the God who literally knows and number every hair on your head who died and gave his life for you, that you can have life more abundantly, that he would want this, this sort of relationship with you? How? And so, like, my main, my main issue with this is how we sit and we justify this. Now, I do know a lot of people are so confused, like, how do people call this? demonic and how is this idolatry and we are christian principles we even have a service every now and then on sunday or whatever but at the same time the fruit god said you will know them by their fruits and i want everybody really to examine yourself especially if you're in a sorority and fraternity and really ask yourself the fruit of what you did like when you were online and in that process how in the world would anybody look at you as you sat there and degraded multiple people, as I did, how can any person sit there and say that this behavior like, would be Christian behavior? Mm -hmm. You have to literally quench the Holy Spirit and look the other way for that idol that's on your heart to be okay with the stuff that I'm really about to tell you that we went through, right? Mm -hmm. So from the time that we all met each other, right? Um, and she's talking specifically about Hazen. You, you meet in this room and in this room, like immediately they tell you that you need to, you got to go and live off campus. You got to go get all your stuff, pack a bag. Immediately you finna go live with your lawn sisters off campus. So we find a place to live off campus. And by the time that we get out of that meeting, our phones just are ringing, 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 ringing. Like every old Delta past Delta, you know what I mean? Every person from our chapter just starts ringing and calling you and calling you and calling you and calling you. It's so friend, And then they tell you that they're chasing you. They're behind you. So you're like doing this high speed chase, going through the city. It's crazy. You're doing all these things, right? And so you're trying to do all this just to get to this destination to where the rest of your, um, to where the rest of your line sisters are going to be. And then um, you finally end up getting into the place where the rest of your line sisters are going to be. And this is the point for you to get to know each other, to know each other's names. I mean, you don't know everybody that you're pledging with, right? So you get to that place and then they tell you to line up and you, you start lining up in height order or whatever. And I was number nine on my line, by the way. So you start lining up in height order and you're going through that. And then the second that you get there, you're asking everybody, are you down? Are you down? Are you going to pledge? Because you're trying to figure out if, if somebody not going to pledge the same thing because you don't, you want to leave them alone. Like it's so ungodly, it's so unsisterly. And so then you end up meeting with your DP and your ADP. That's Dean of Pledges and that's Assistant Dean of Pledges. These are members of the chapter, right? Um, and so you end up meeting with them and then um, they end up telling you how the underground process is going to go. Because remember, we already met with them and they told us how the above ground process. So now they end up telling you what's going to happen in the underground process. All this stuff you need to get, sweatpants, white t-shirts, white bra white panties i'm talking about like honestly y'all the stuff that we've been to talk about we're finna go through is straight up witchcraft this would be the same stuff that if you were sitting and doing a ritual in witchcraft it would be the same stuff that you would be wearing the same stuff that you would be wearing like white bra white panties you know what i mean all same color tennis shoes same color everything all that and so you're going through all this and then they're talking to you and they're they're trying to like fill you out to see if you gonna hate you gonna get haze you gonna pledge or you not finna pledge all this stuff like that and then and i'm only speaking for my chapter y'all by the way i can't speak for every other chapter that means different um chapters at each school so i'm only speaking about what happened with me 
And I'm not talking about my losses. I'm not talking about none of them. I'm talking about my experience. Just because I don't want to tell nobody else's story. But we will expose because some people on here, they're going to come out of that tonight. So <laughs> um, in Jesus name. <laughs> so yeah, so you meet with the ADP, you meet with the DP, and then they talking about, oh, we finna do this, do that. The next second, you know, all the line sisters, or not line sisters, sorry, all the big sisters, they show up to where y'all at. And then they start harassing you, this, that, and the third, cursing you out, ah, da, 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 da. And then they blindfold you, they blindfold you, and they put you in a car or whatever. And then when you get blindfolded and put in the car, you're taken to some undisclosed location. Because basically with the underground process, they have these things called set. Okay, set is when, okay, how do I explain? So you're a college student, right? Throughout the day, you have class. But right after class, the actual above ground process would start around 6 p.m. And that's when you would go, you would learn about the history of Delta, all this stuff, you know, normal things above ground with the advisor. But at 10 o'clock, you headed to set. <laughs> set is when they finna beat this information into you. And if you don't know the information that you needed to know, you're going to just go through the worst things that you can imagine. Um, and so they're explaining this process. So mind you, we just had the official process, right? Where we met everybody online and, and all that in the school. Now we're off the campus and now we're meeting and they're talking to us about the underground process and what you're going to go through and what it's going to look like. So yeah, they blindfold you. They take you to, I don't know. I think we was behind like a Kroger building, like a, something crazy. And they, they, then that's when the big sisters start lining you up because you can line up in high order, but if a big sister that has your number don't like you, she gonna move your number because <laughs> then that's how it is. So they start lining you up and then they start intimidating you. You know what I'm saying? Like bucking at you. You know, they do these things called uh, smile wipes, which basically they slap you in the face if you like smiling or you smirking, whatever. It's like they gonna beat this stuff into you. You understand? Like it's it's really it's really gang type behavior. You know, you're 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 terrified. You know, in the beginning, you really are. Now, you're going to put on this face like you with it, but you're really terrified. And so, and then um, they tell you that you need to go home, da 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 You need to figure this out. You need to figure that out. And so, um, anyways, each night, it starts with the set process. So, the big sisters will tell you to meet them at a certain location. And the reason that they tell you to do that is because they're not supposed to know where you're living. So if they find out that you're living at this location, they'll all show up and start harassing you. And so you'll have to find a place that you're not live like that they don't know where you live in and to live and live in that spot. And they can't find you. Like if they follow you to your place and they find out that y'all live in there, they come through, they ramsack it, and then you have to leave because wherever you're living, that's like your place of peace, right? They can't really harass you because all throughout the day, you're doing nothing but just like running errands. So that means that you're with another line sister, another person that you're pledging with, and you're running errands. And what that looks like is just basically using you. You're going to get them food. You're going to get their dry cleaning. You're going like, basically they have, they, they make you give them a copy of your schedule at school. And so they know the breaks that you have. You know what I mean? And so what it looks like is, I'm, I was the number nine. So the nines that were, that came in the line like before me, that pledged before me, they would be the ones that would be on me, like calling and stuff. And they would have my, my number. They would have like, um, you know, if you did something or if they felt that you talked to them disrespectful, if you didn't call them big sister, you got to write five page long uh, papers talking about how you're disrespectful. It was just a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. Like um, you have to go get them food. They don't care if you don't have money. They don't care whatever. Uh, you got to go get a dry cleaning. On top of that, you got to go do house visits. So house visits is like when you go meet up with big sisters that are just in town. It's you and like two or three other people with you. And mind you, you could never be by yourself. If they ever caught you on campus by yourself, they would kidnap you. Like on top of that, like not even the Deltas, but like if the Qs, which was the brother for uh, fraternity of us, caught us, they could kidnap us. And then they would have to call your license. And they would have to come get you like... They could do whatever, you know what I mean, to you. Like, you know, you have to get in a cut, which I mean, like, take licks. Um, everything. They smile wipe you. They do this thing where they make you sit in delta chair, which is basically like squats. They sit on you. They spit on you. They hit, you they know what I mean? They spit on you? Hair. 
yeah <laughs> yeah like um for real um they do they do all that i mean some of the stuff that we had to do at set i mean the most demeaning disgusting stuff that you could ever imagine we would do this thing called delta apple where we would literally all take and bite out of the onion and like pass it to each other you know we would eat dog food we would eat um what else how how else you you know they would like if if one of the girls on the line had like the prettiest hair they would ruin it you know what i mean i'm talking about like ruin it you know what i mean um now uh what else you know pushing shoving smacking hitting you know what i mean you would have to take wood wood is where they you know they got the big paddles you would have to get in the position and they would just tag you in, tag you out, you know, that kind of environment. If one of your sisters was like struggling or, or falling, like you would have to go and help them and like sit underneath them. And if you didn't help them, like they would like push and shove you. They try to get in between your line because when you're in set, you're like locked up like this. And so they push and they shove and they throwing you down. They, you know, but you could do, you could defend your line system, but you could never like hit them or do anything like that. And if you ever got an attitude because of something that they did <laughs> to you, it's over with for you, you know, and what they would do would be manipulation. So they wouldn't necessarily punish you. They would punish somebody else that's not doing something because of you. And so you would sit there and watch your line system go through it. You know what I mean? Like, and I mean through it. And it could be on the smallest thing. It could be the fact that you didn't say big sister before their name. It could be at the fact that you didn't know, you know what I mean, the founders, or you didn't know the past national presidents, or you ain't know three lines back, folks that, that crossed, it, I crossed in 2007, so folks that crossed in 2000, you know what I mean? It could, it, it could be anything, and mind you, you're at set from 10 p.m. to 3, 4 a.m. in the morning, and then you gotta get up and go to class, and on top of that, at our school, they had what you was called a natural process, so like, you basically had to wear um, suits all day and then you couldn't wear any makeup and you couldn't have any weave in your hair. So you looked horrible. And I'm telling you, and everybody in class knew you was on in line. I mean, I got called out in the middle of class where a professor looked at me and was like, are you okay? Are you, are you all right? Like, even if I showed you like the pictures of me online, you would, you, you would like take me to the hospital. You know what I'm saying? You like, like, yo, like, like you it, you know what I'm saying it's like get out like the movie get out <laughs> you know what I'm saying like you just look at like please help me you know what I mean but you know it, it, it could be anything it was so much manipulation where it's like if you walked across the grass if you went in the cab to eat if you if anybody saw you if anybody from another fraternity or sorority they saw you it was like you was finna get it you was spend to get it and let's not even talk about other other chapters other chapters coming to like basically um visit you oh no nah, they finna show out because they got other chapters and they trying to show out how let me tell you how hard this line is basically like how much we can degrade them you know what i'm saying like we had to crack an egg and like pour the egg into each other's mouth from our mouth i'm talking about like the most demeaning stuff that you can ever 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 imagine and then you want to sit up here and say this is christian principles it, it's no way in the world that you can sit up here and say that, you know, but majority of us were so deceived because we have these women that we look up to that are older women. And mind you, on top of that, how people even get into these sororities is that they, they sell you on this black idolatry. And it's just facts. It's black idolatry where it's like, you know how in school you got to write papers on Martin Luther King and Frederick Douglass and the most influential black people. And it's like, now you see these women and they started an organi organization in 1913. Like who was in college as black women in 1913? On top of that, they, they were the first women in the women's suffrage march fighting for rights. So you like, yeah, you already pumped up because you go to a <laughs> to an HBCU and they making you pumped up about your race and everything is about your race and everything is about, about being black and all this mm -hmm. idolatry with that. And so now you're seeing these influential women, I mean, of course, I, I saw my mom, I saw my aunt, like if they went through and they did it, okay, well clearly there's nothing wrong with that. I'm 18, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like nobody, I, I think people don't understand that. Like I'm 18, you know what I mean? Like nobody is looking logically and critically at the Bible on top of that, I wasn't a Christian. So you're just looking at it like, okay, well this is a rites of passage and that's what it is. It's a rites of passage. So, 
I'm just speaking on the underground process. Let me see if there's something that I missed. You can ask another question, but I have, if I if y'all see me look down, I have a bunch of notes because <laughs> I want to make sure y'all know everything. Um, I've been looking at some of the um, the comments in the live chat, and some people are like, "I can't believe she's exposing all of this, all these details oh, and secrets and stuff." But that's why we said in the beginning, as Christians, if, see if this organization wasn't claiming to be like somehow attached to Christian principles, then I wouldn't even. Hey, that's y'all business. But hey, y'all on y'all are on our territory when you say, "Well, this is based on Christian principles." So okay, yeah. well, I need to see these principles. Because mm -hmm. the Bible tells us to expose evil in darkness. And mm -hmm. so all the stuff that you described that went on in that underground process was evil. Um, Very much so. I know in Greek and life, it also says to judge amongst yourself righteously. And I think yeah. people don't understand that as well. Are we called as Christians to condemn? No. We're not even called to judge unbelievers, but we are called to judge righteously other right. believers claiming that they're in the faith. You know what I mean? The same way that you would have charged somebody up to see if they was a Delta or a Q, I'm charging you up to see whether or not you a Christian. Because it ain't no way that you can sit here and say that you are a true Christian and you go by the Bible and you sitting up here and you're trying to keep under wraps this level of darkness. You will be judged by this stuff. And we haven't even gotten into the oaths that we take. We haven't even gotten into the stuff that we said. We haven't even gotten to the fact that you claim to be a Christian organization, but we sit in here with Minerva on the crest, which is a Greek <laughs> goddess. But you're talking about Christian principles. You're not even talking about the altars that we kneeled in front of when we was doing all of our ceremonies, when we were doing all of our rituals. Pledging our life to Delta Sigma Theta. Mm -hmm. Like literally, our chant is all of my, all of my love, my peace and happiness I give to Delta Sigma Theta. I don't get that to nobody but Jesus Christ. Nobody. And that's just what it is. Like, your, my loyalty with God, the first commandment says, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart and have no other gods before you. I have no other gods before Jesus Christ. He's number one, number one in my heart. And that means what it looked like when I was in the world was my loyalty was to these things, right? To the world, to, to, to my family, to Delta, to everything else. But the second I became born again, my loyalty now lies in Jesus Christ. That means that everything he doesn't like, I don't like. Everything that hurts him hurts me. Everything that's not okay with him is no longer okay with me. And it says that anybody who will seek to keep their life will lose it. But anybody who will lose their life for my sake shall gain it. And I'm telling you right now, people are heading to an eternity of hell. And you think I'm going to go to hell for you? Nah, it ain't never going to happen. <laughs> I don't care about you. I don't Come care on. about how you feel. I don't care about these little stupid secret handshakes and stuff that you trying to keep under wraps why to make yourself seem like you was hard no we wasn't hard we were deceived we were deceived you understand so like this issue is so serious that god is number one god is number one and as believers we are called to righteously judge our fruit and you can't tell me that if Jesus was sitting right there in front of you that you would be okay doing those things in front of him because no none of us would he hates idolatry. He hates it. Majority, he can't stand idolatry. The Israelites, every time they fell into idolatry, there was judgment for idolatry. Yeah. It's not even funny. So don't sit up here and claim that we're on Christian principles, but then you sit up here and have this Greek goddess that's at the top of your crest that literally is your sorority emblem and who you follow after. In the above ground process, they are called the Minerva Circle. And these are the people who bring the pledges through that she will guide you into all wisdom. Wait, what? The, the <laughs> fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right. And I yeah. fear the Lord. This is why I'm on this live talking to y'all because I fear the Lord. I don't fear man. I could care less. Don't fear those who are able to kill your body, but fear him who is able to not only kill the body, but to throw your soul into hell. That's it's right. not a joke. And you will be judged righteously for these things that you did. It's not just about strolling or we turn. No, like you're going to have to give an account for everything that you did. And then on top of that, you turned around and did it to others. You became a stumbling block to other people. I brought over four lines after me. Four. Four. Did you do the Was same DP stuff to them? them? Did you do, did y'all do the same Man, stuff to them? Let's talk about this because a lot of people share this perspective from everything that was done to them and like a victim perspective. But, but 
we're being before the Lord in which I have to give an account in which I've, of course, go to, gone to God and definitely have asked for forgiveness and renounced all these things, which is why I'm on this live. But my goodness, like I did even worse. I did even worse. I was the biggest manipulator. I was a bully. I was the biggest manipulator you can imagine. I gave, you know, wood to other people. I hit them. I shoved them. Mm -hmm. I, you know what I mean? I didn't spit on anybody, but it doesn't matter. I, you know, every single thing that we did in the underground process, I did to other people. Had them buying me stuff, having them taking me places, writing me papers, doing all types of stuff. All types of stuff. Like, this stuff is not a joke, you guys. Like, I mean, long phone calls, like indoctrinating, indoctrinating people, indoctrinating them in this religion of Delta. Because that's basically what it was, like indoctrinating them to that. So it's like, not only do you become a, not only like did these things make you stumble, but you became a stumbling block to other people. I promoted this to other people. I stand accountable for those things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like people wanted to be a Delta because of me, because of me, right? Like that's horrible. Yeah. That's horrible. Like, I have to give an account before God. And you will have to give an account before God. Literally. Mm -hmm. Like, it just is what it is. Somebody says, it's not a religion. How dare you? I would like to... I know, to she's one of my... Uh, she one of my what? former law sisters. A religion is something that you do things religiously. Like, that is what it's called. We did things religiously. Like, even if we go through all of the different things that we talked about, like, even if we go through, like, the oath, or if we go through specific things, they specifically took words out of the Bible and changed it to put mm. Delta there. We pledge our life to the old Delta. <laughs> like, like, what are you talking about? Like, they have a Delta prayer praying to Delta. Mm. What are you talking about? It's not a religion. Every single thing that they did was unto Delta. The oaths you gave were to Delta. Literally. So how in the world can you sit up here and talk about it's not a religion? That's why you pledge the sacred vow and the sacred trust that you, that you speak is literally that Delta Sigma Theta is a lifetime commitment. I pledge my life to it. I give a oath. I take a vow. You take, even in the, even in the, even in like the oath, or what do you say, like the uh, ritual books, where you go through this initiation process, you take an oath, and I'm, I'm actually gonna go through, I'm actually gonna read it. So I guess since people saying that it wasn't uh, like a religion. <laughs> yeah, and I'm flipping through a book now. Um, yeah. Talking yeah. about, this is a book I read on Freemasonry. Mm -hmm. And they break down the aspects of what a religion is. Let's see if you find yours first or if I find mine first. Mm -hmm. Because I, these are some of the things that we said, okay? I do promise in the presence of the eternal spirit of truth and these finite witnesses that I will never reveal any of the secrets, passwords, signs, grips, or other confidences. I say this in the, <laughs> in the spirit of the eternal truth. I say this, right? Let's even talk about idolatry. In our national hymn, we say, Delta Sigma Theta, we rejoice in thee. Delta Sigma Theta, we pledge thee loyalty. On the side of our ritual book, it's a <laughs> doctrine. <laughs> doctrine. <laughs> what you talking about? Oh, because I came. It says doctrine. Doctrine. Oh. Doctrine of what? <laughs> what are you talking about? It says rituals and doctrine. How are you mad that people are exposing Delta Sigma Theta, but you're not mad that you've heard God? How can yeah, you sit I mean, up here and disrespect Jesus Christ and you're going to go this hard for a sorority, but half of y'all don't go this hard for Jesus Christ? This sorority yeah. is not finna get you into heaven, period. <laughs> Deceived is an understatement. You're not finna get to heaven because you pledged Delta. Everything that we did, even when we got offline, everything was about, I'm going to take your man, F this other sorority, you don't do it like me, this, that, and the third. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? At the end of the day, I wasn't that one even when I was in the world. And I'm definitely not that one now that I'm a Christian. 
<laughs> like, and that's, yeah. that's just what it is, right? So my main issue is, like, how can you sit up here and say these things? And I'm even, I'm, I'm literally, I'm finna go deeper just because y'all want me to go deeper, right? So I'm finna go deeper. And Don't Delta Sigma Theta, that's a sorority based upon Christian principles. They say, we believe in a spiritual life, but we leave to the individual the selection of the medium for its outward manifestation. So you're a really, you are a sorority based upon Christian principles, Christian pr principles. But yet you're sitting up here saying that it don't matter what you are. You don't have to be a Christian. Like you can serve whatever God that you want to serve. Yeah, that's what we call universalism, which that probably comes from um, Freemasonry, which is also very universal, right? Mm -hmm. You can any anybody can be a Freemason regardless of their religious beliefs which in itself is a problem. Like as Christians, we don't have the liberty to call people brothers and sisters who don't share the same faith as us. Right. So if I worship Jesus and you worship Allah, we cannot be brothers. We cannot be sisters. Like that's just, that goes against our Bible. So if you mm -hmm. want to do that, just know that you're no longer operating within the realm of, of biblical Christianity. And I think a lot of people are ignorant of that fact. I'm going to go even further. This is what we say in our oath once we become initiated. At the initiation ceremony, it says, you seek of your own free will, are about to take upon yourselves vows and obligations from which you can never be freed. They will follow you to the final judgment. What? Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> what? But yeah, you didn't make that up. First. That's in the Delta book, right? You didn't make that up. That's in the no, book. No, this is from the ritual book. These listen, don't play with me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go even further. We got a pyramid study guy. Who's ready? <laughs> Who's ready? Like, are you kidding? Like, I did this when I was 18. I don't vouch. I don't let me tell y'all something. Anything, anybody that comes against my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus can get that work. Like, I don't know, like <laughs> I, and I love you very much and I love you and then I, I desire for you to be saved. But at the same time, my loyalty lies in Jesus Christ, him alone, him alone, him alone. Mm -hmm. That is where my loyalty lies. And I literally just brought this out because I wanted people to understand that we had, uh, we had evidence. <laughs> But there's so many things that um, they talk about in here. I'm just going to read one thing. This is in a meditation, and this is from our ritual ritual book, okay? In the meditation, I'm going to tell, and, I'm, and I want you to tell me what scripture, what scripture, like, does it sound like, right? Though I speak with tongues of the learned and the profound and have no love, I am a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. And though I prophesy, know all the Delta laws, and rituals, traditions, and secrets, and can recite them glibly. And though I have such absolute devotion to duty that I can do anything my hands undertake and have lot love, I am nothing. A true soror is very patient, very kind. Her love for her sorors knows no jealousy. She makes no parade, puts on no airs, is never rude, never defensive, never selfish, never irritated, never resentful. I mean, they irritated in the comment. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> a true Delta is never glad when others go wrong. She is gladdened by goodness. Always slow, always slow to expose. Never a carrier of gossip. Always eager to believe the best. Always hopeful. Always willing to help others in the slow process of growth. She wears her pen with humility. Her love never disappears. As for interpreting the law, it will be superseded. As for tongues, they will cease. As for college uh, education, it will be superseded. Uh -uh. Yes, uh -uh. ma'am. For now, we know only bit by bit, and we prophesy only bit by bit. <laughs> but when the true sisterly spirit is attained, the uncharitable shall fade away. When I was a pyramid, I taught as a pyramid. <laughs> I understood as a pyramid. I thought as a pyramid. But now I have become a delta. I am done with the ways of those intending to be deltas. 
At present, so we see only the great potentialities of a sisterhood founded on Christian principles. But someday we shall know that it's a realization, uh, that its realization rests upon the quality of our lives in fellowship with one another. At present, I am learning bit, it's almost over, I'm learning bit by bit. But then I shall understand all along, the creator of all has understood the dignity and the worth of every individual. Thus faith and hope and love last on these three. But in Delta Sigma Theta, the greatest of these is love. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. How do you take the scripture from 1 Corinthians 13, which talks about love that we should have towards Jesus Christ, and then you take it and turn around and switch and change the words to love that you should have for Delta Sigma Theta? Mm -hmm. How? How? How do you do that when the Bible literally says to take, you are not to add nor take away from the word of God? How do you do that? And you sit up here and take these words to literally turn around <laughs> and to pledge your divine devotion. That's why people are going so ham because they pledge their life to a sorority, not to God. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. I'm going so ham for Jesus. You going so, so ham for a sorority that would never, ever get you in heaven. Never, not even in a million years. As a matter of fact, if you don't repent for the oath that you took and you don't repent for the stuff that you did, you will go to hell. Yeah. That's just facts. That is facts. Like at the end of the day, you can be as mad as you want to be. Don't care, never care when I was a Delta. Don't care. I stand righteously and I stand boldly for Jesus Christ. I stand boldly for him. All old things have passed away. I am a new creation in him, a brand new creation, you know, and it's no different from, you know, the disciples or the apostles, who, you know, they went through it. But it's like, if I can talk to one person and really they understand that you said these things, you sat on a pillow in front of candles, in front of an altar witchcraft you sat there and kneeled before placing your hand on the bible <laughs> and you took these oaths to an organization nah nah like you need to repent and that's just 100 percent. we have a delta mitzvah and it says dear line sisters now we must depart join hands in delta's chain let us be loyal faithful true in heart and honor delta's precious name amen what Ooh. who are you I don't understand how in the world you can read the Bible and you can sit up here, literally sit up here and say, God bless my sorority, bless Delta. I honor, I worship. This is what you call worship. You have made prayers. We have Delta prayers. We have Delta songs. We have Delta hymns. We have all these things like that. Literally in our ritual book, it says principle one, people, which was the pyramids, had to live with high esteem and in warm, nurturing environments in order to become constructive, supportive persons. And it says to foster high esteem and positive environment, big sisters must have a Pygmalion attitude towards pyramids. Pygmalion, a sculptor in, myth in mythology, carved an ivory statue of his ideal beautiful woman. He undertook this with great care and fell so much in love with his own creation that the goddess of beauty and love became sympathetic and gave life to the statue. This myth inspired George Bernard Shaw to write a play, Pygmalion, which later became his musical. So it says very much like Pygmalion or Henry Higgins, if we can treat people positively, especially those we teach or initiate, we can expect positive results. What? But you was, how? How can two walk together lest they agree? How can you serve God and serve the devil? How can you sit up here and say, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? But then you sit up here and say, but we need Minerva to take us and teach us what it looks to have wisdom. What are you talking about? Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. If it be that you serve false gods, then you serve false gods. If it be that you serve God, then you serve him and you serve him alone. And it's so crazy, many people can give you the pronunciations and they could correct you on this, but they can't even tell you nothing about Jesus. Yeah. The same person that all of y'all got them little scriptures in your bio, <laughs> claiming that you love Jesus Christ with all your heart as you sit up here and serve another God.
mm. as you sat up here and did disrespectful and demeaning things to other people that you have never repented for, as you sat there and took oaths to your final judgment for it, claiming that you're going to pledge and give your life and dedicate your life to a secret society, where in God, nothing is secret. Mm. and God, nothing is hidden. We have Genesis to Revelation. Nothing is hidden in the Lord. Mm. He never told you ever in life to join a secret society in order to have any sort of wisdom. Mm. Any sort of wisdom. Our wisdom is found in the Lord. Fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, period. And once you understand that, you really understand that like your soul is for real in jeopardy. And if you don't turn from this stuff, and if you do not repent, you will not be with him. I don't, I, it don't, I don't care how much you road trip, how much you sat there and tried to eat an onion, how much you ate. I don't care what you went through. Don't care. If you do not repent, you will not be with the Lord. It just is what it is. And if you don't turn from these evil and these wicked things, and you that's the issue is that people consistently tend to justify evil and they justify wickedness. You know what I mean? And they so scared of man that they want to be puffed up in pride on here trying to justify what they did is right. That's crazy to me. Half of mm -hmm. these people will stand so tall for an organization, but they never speak out on behalf of Christ. Yeah. Come with it. If what you did was so honorable and so proud, why are you mad? <laughs> why are you mad? It can make sense. <laughs> like it, it I don't I don't even understand why you would be a mad. It's just consistently just like black idolatry. And then it says right here about the Minerva circle, it is fitting that the attributes associated with Minerva, the goddess of wisdom, be influential in the minds and spirits of these sorors as they plan and execute their duties, elected to guide them in carrying out the sorority's most sacred trust, the induction of new members into Delta Sigma Theta. So you need this false Greek, false Greek goddess in order to carry out induction of new members into the sorority because only through her are you able to attain wisdom. All y'all that's mad in the chat, can you put the Bible verse on there that tells me that it's okay? <laughs> can, you, can you show me the scripture where it tells us to go to Minerva for wisdom? <laughs> can, you, can, you, can you pull that scripture up? Can you post it <laughs> since you mad? Like, tell oh, me that where, where that's okay. Tell me where God said that that's okay. And the worst part about it, the worst part about it is we do this stuff in a church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you sit up here and play with God. How? How? How do you play with God like this? I think a lot of people are, are really ignorant of the scriptures. And I think that's why they don't understand why Christians mm -hmm. can come and expose this stuff and talk about all the things that are wrong with it and say, oh, you guys are judging. You guys are judging. Like the scriptures literally tell us to judge righteously. Jesus said judge righteously. And like y'all are judging us for judging, which is <laughs> like very hypocritical. Hypocritical. I, I, I don't know why people have don't, I, you guys are judging. They made judges. they made tons of judgments. You're they done made tons of judgments. Thing. You this, you you wrong, you this. You done made and a lot of final judgments, but when we judge you that you in sin and need to repent, you mad. Like that's, that's the main we're funny, that's the funny thing. That. We're commissioned to do that. And if Delta doesn't care what spiritual uh deity or whatever that someone um chooses to follow then what if what if that deity says expose all of delta's secrets so i like there's no way we can be wrong <laughs> there's no way we can be wrong in this because Del this is the problem with universal ideas contradictions can't both be right at the same time okay and so God. that's that's one of the main issues with this kind of stuff this is one of the main mm -hmm. issues even within freemasonry which is where mm -hmm. the, these greek fraternities and sororities like are they come from they, they come from all these masonic ideas so, yes. yes, Christians can judge. I don't know who lied to y'all and told you that mm -hmm. we can't. If you keep reading Matthew 7, which is where everybody gets that from, keep reading to verse 5, and you'll see where Jesus said, take the eye, take the, take the, whatever, the, the plank. Yeah, the yeah, beam out of your own eye. Yeah. And then you can see so that you can show your brother 
how to not mm-hmm. do what they're doing. Of course, I'm jacking up the scripture, the scripture right now, but the point is, Jesus didn't say never judge anything, or else y'all shouldn't be judging us, or else we shouldn't be judging the person that shot takeoff two weeks ago, right? Let's, <laughs> okay, let's just throw out judging all the way. Never judge Seriously. It ridiculous. doesn't make sense. Nobody, when people say, man, you look beautiful today, don't nobody be like, stop judging me. Right. Like, <laughs> it's a judgment. Everybody right. makes judgments. In and Christianity, we, we are called to judge righteously. Mm-hmm. The same way you was gossiping and judging me in y'all group chats, um, it's the same way we're, yeah. we're, we're judging you righteously as well. And it's none of these are our own ideals or things we've come up with for our own doctrine per se. Like this is, these are the words of Jesus Christ. So if you're mad, you're mad at Jesus. All these people are leaving and they're leaving for a reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? What, what, what sense would I have to like, how do you say like, lie or, or or make this a thing I, I mean i risk losing everything my whole family is greek yeah you know what i mean my whole family but jesus said very clearly if you love your mother father sister and brother mm. more than me you're not worthy of me mm. you're not worthy of me to everybody you may pick up your cross and you will follow me follow me you pick mm. up your cross and that means whether it's persecution whether it's everything you know what i mean and that's the issue like i'm not I'm really not concerned necessarily about the people that are, you know, upset or saying whatever. I understand you're deceived. I was deceived. I used to come at people who did this all the time. They can't. They this. How could you do this? How could you do that? And and truly, we're just praying that the veil be removed from your eyes because you will have to give an account for these things. You will have to give an account. Like, like this stuff is very serious. Some of the things that we said, some of the rituals that we did. And I want y'all to understand about ritual, rituals or whatever. Um, and I want y'all to understand about rituals and certain things that, like, you do, right? You guys, they do rituals in witchcraft. It's the same ceremonies, the white robes, the black robes, the lit candles. You know what I mean? It's food that's at the altar. You know what I mean? Place their ancestor worship. All this stuff, you guys, it is not okay. And you really are bringing in spirits. You're bringing in demons. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really not a joke. And let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. Not only are you bringing in demons to yourself, honestly, after I crossed, I became a whole different type of woman. I, I, As a matter of fact, I was Jezebel reincarnated. I was full of pride. I was full of sexual immorality. Mm. I was full of wickedness. I was so disrespectful. I was depressed. I, you know what I mean? After that, you know what I mean? I had two abortions. I was just wilding. I was wilding. You do not understand like the curses that y'all bringing on your family. When you take an oath, like the Bible even says to make your yay, yay, your nay, nay. You don't pledge or make an oath or take a vow to nobody. This is the Bible. And if you are upset with it, you are upset with God. You really not mad at me. But he says to expose these things, whether it be exposed now, while you have a time to repent, Mm -hmm. as opposed to being exposed when you stand before God, because you will stand guilty. You look at this like this is just a cute rites of passage. No, you guys, this is a demonic spiritual transfer Mm -hmm. that happened. I was a totally different person after I pledged. Totally different person. My entire identity was wrapped up in me being a Delta. Half of y'all on here knew me as Melissa the Delta. Many people are still in their 40s and 50s living their life through being in whatever organization mm-hmm. that they're into. It's, 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 it's ridiculous. And you have to understand, like, this is very serious. One of the main things that we did, so you have two inductions. You have the pyramid induction, and then you also have the process The process when you cross over and you're initiated into the sorority. The pyramid process is when you're, the, when you're online pledging. You're a pyramid. You're not a delta. And so the, one of the main things that we said during one of the jewel ceremonies or one of the conquests that we have to go to, right? We're literally, it literally said pyramids. You now commit yourself to a life of service. As a sign of this commitment, you will now take off your shoes and walk on the symbolic earth of our ancestors, earth of Mother Africa, earth of our slave ancestors, earth of the civil rights fighters and all who helped to dismantle the legal barriers of racism, earth of today, where the battle for human rights and dignity continues. As each pyramid walks across the earth, sprinkled on the cloth, 
One source stands at each station holding a large prompter card. She may illuminate it with a flashlight or candle. The pyramid must read the card right there. And then literally on the card, we literally say out of our own mouth, I step upon this earth in memory of Mother Africa. I step upon this earth and remember to keep alive in my mind the history of my slave ancestors. And I pledge to keep faith with their legacy. Basically making sure that people know that they enslaved and oppressed for the rest of their life. Um, I step upon this earth so that there would be no forgetting those civil rights workers who in every generation struggled and fought and finally dismantled legal bonds of segregation. So we're walking in this dimly dark lit ceremony, right? Pledging our life to Mother Africa and step it like, like this so where, is where was crap. Jesus? Where was Jesus? <laughs> He's nowhere. Jesus, the process. Jesus is not in our rituals. Jesus ain't in this book that y'all mad about. This a doctrine. <laughs> this is this is their doctrine. This is their Bible. Their doctrine is 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 the Bible. But Jesus is nowhere. It nowhere in our rituals. Jesus ain't nowhere in the in in, in the. And I'm saying our because I'm just speaking. But I'm not in this anymore. But Jesus is nowhere involved in this process. He's not even mentioned. The only thing that's mentioned is Christian principles. You you literally say in the oath that they leave you up to whatever God that you want to mm -hmm. serve. It's the same thing as ma masonry, Masonic stuff. It's the same thing. It just gets worse. <laughs> it literally gets worse. Like I I, I just honestly, y'all, like we um literally have to say this poem. And in this poem, it says, "Delta life is fun, and we've just begun to get." Our share of this sorority life, high, high hopes we have for the future and our golden life. We know we don't get depressed. Here's where we carve our golden rule. Have faith in Delta and the things we do. You won't go wrong. Oh, no, this is our family jewel. Have faith in Delta. Let me tell you something. So you stand in front of Jesus Christ. Right. And Jesus is asking you a question, and you go, "No, no, no! I'm gonna put my faith in Delta. <laughs> I'm not like I'm not gonna put my faith in you. I'm gonna put my faith in Delta Sigma Theta. Like, are you nuts? I read a book. <laughs> it was called um, African American Fraternities and Sororities. I have the mm -hmm. ebook, and it's probably the most scholarly and anthology book on the issue of black Greek lettered organizations and they were talking about how there's a delta chant that says when I get to heaven and and Peter says how why should I let you in and the person responds back I'll just show him my delta pin and it's like why <laughs> how could you say something like that and and also again say that you are based on Christian principles because nobody's delta pin or aka pin or alpha pin or cap a pen. None of these pens are going to mean anything. So All this said, stuff will be dead. Yeah. And that's the thing. They have three services, right? So three ceremonies. You have the pyramid induction. You also have the initiation ceremony into the organization. But they even go as far as to have an omega, omega service. This is a service that you have at your funeral. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it's like, people do not understand, like, you have to renounce you have to renounce vows and oaths and things that you took. It's no different if you come out of a gang. Like when God calls you out, you come out of these things. You are now separate. You are holy. You come out like we're in the world, but we're not of the world. God doesn't tell us to join these organizations for his benefit. And the worst part is to see like the church, see this seducing doctrine with all these so-called Christians that are also a part of these organizations you're not Christian. And that's a seducing doctrine that he talks about in Revelation with the compromising church where they've allowed this doctrine, this doctrine of the Nicolaitans, this doctrine of Balaam and Balak, which puts a stumbling block before the people, the Christians, right? Um, the people, it, it, it teaches you. You see those people with those coexist signs on their bumper yeah. sticker, like that every, everything can coexist together. No, it cannot. You dare sit there with your letters on with Minerva sitting at the top of your crest, sitting up in a church saying that you're going to worship God with a false God. You dare sit there and do that. And you sit there and you're, you're, you're serious. Hmm. How does that work? It doesn't work.
Like, choose ye this day whom you will serve. If it be Delta, you serve Delta. You put your chips where you may lay. But I'm going to put my chips on the side of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's who I serve, him and him alone. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty about being a true born-again believer, and a, a, a true Christian, literally, is that the Holy Spirit comes upon you. He gives it, you this boldness, and you no longer, you no longer are, are, are in the world. He calls you out. That means you can be a former Delta. You can be a former fornicator. You can be a former, you know what I mean, drunk. You can be a former all these things, but now I am made new in Christ. Mm -hmm. I am made new in him, him alone. And I now no longer do things that he hates. I would no longer, it's like, it's no way I can be in a relationship and call myself to be in a relationship with Jesus Christ. But I sit here and I do all these things that he hates. There's no way I sit here and say that we're in an organization of Christian principles. But the second that we cross, we having parties getting drunk at the club. Which one is it? Which one is it? And how, I wanted how, to talk yeah. to you. I wanted to ask you about how y'all treated people who weren't Greek. Um, how mm -hmm. how does how does Greek life treat the the quote unquote, quote unquote GDIs? I know some people use that term. Did y'all use that? right? <laughs> Was there like a separation? No, you gotta know the phrases. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, GDIs, every, yeah. Every fraternity the they use they use GDIs, which is the term for those who are not Greek. Um, we can't say what it means, but mm -hmm. it's GD. I say, gosh darn, basically. gosh darn, like individual. <laughs> yeah, individual, and it's like you, you're an individual. You know what I mean? Like they don't look at you like any sort of individ individuality in sororities or fraternities is frowned upon you're looked at as not sisterly because again when you're on the line it's like you are taught to have this kind of like mob like gang type mentality you know so it's we all together so seeing people have their own minds their own thoughts you go against the line you go against anything that they're saying like you you're not looked at as good so um of course, you had certain people who were respected who didn't, didn't pledge or whatever. But, you know, let's just say people who chose not to pledge or people who didn't make the lines and stuff like that. I mean, you was definitely treated bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, there's no way around it. You was treated bad. Like, nobody really wanted to mess with you like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Nobody wanted to mess with you like that. And somebody said in the comments that... Um, I don't see all the comments, but somebody said in the comments that there are some people who don't do all these things. Everybody does the national process. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm reading out of y'all doctrine. <laughs> <laughs> everybody does the above ground mm -hmm. national process. Sure, not everybody did the, the behind the scenes stuff where, you know what I'm saying, you you was getting wood. And not only was you in a, in a back process, was you taking wood by deltas, you was taking wood by cues. Mm -hmm. We took wood by, by men. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like you sitting there getting beat just so you can show your stripes that you hard. You know what I'm saying? Because you took three in and three out. You're not hard. You know what I mean? Like, not in no way, shape, or form. So I just wanted to say that, like, there are definitely people who don't go through the underground process. But there are people, you know what I mean, who still, like, they go through the above ground um, process. And everything that I'm trying to state was written in our ritual book and our traditions. And the fact that we have a ritual book mm -hmm. <laughs> in itself is not okay. That's not even supported. And we took rituals, like we went through rituals. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So so yeah. that's kind of a cop out to say, well, we didn't do any of that. Okay, but how are you gonna feel? Like if you saw a homeless person walking down the street with a Delta shirt on, would you try to snap? Oh, the they taking them out of it. Yeah. No, you know what I'm saying? Like, like if that person yeah. needed that shirt, oh, you need to come up out that. You yeah, know what I mean? We on our campus, we had Greek plots. If you weren't a part of our sorority and you tried to take a seat, even if you was an elderly person, like they calling you from your dorms to come down there and kick the people off of the plot. Mm -hmm. a, pl a plot is an area where you can sit, you know, like where it's like, so we had a Delta area, you know, all these other areas. And so, yeah, they don't care. Like, like sisterhood scholarship and certain, they don't care. Like, if you were a random Mexican man on the street wearing that shirt, they taking you up out of it. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I mean? And then they talking about you could take the shirt, but give them another. No, no, you cannot. Jesus it would never do be. that. Yeah, he would. Like it should never. There it is no way in the world that you covet. I, what I don't understand is how you covet these letters and you covet this sorority this much, but you have none of this type of. You have none of this zeal, none of this bigger, none of this for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. None of it. Like it, it is crazy to me. Like people will go hard to the point that they'll jump on a live that, to, to Kate, but they won't ever do that for Jesus. Mm -hmm. You could blaspheme, disrespect Jesus, watch television shows where they all they do is blaspheme Jesus' name all day long. You would never turn it off. But the second that somebody say Delta, you run it up here on a live. Yeah. Man, repent. Period. <laughs> like, that's the problem. And because people took these oaths and, a, and something happened in the spiritual realm, they became married to it like this. That's why you react in the way you're indoctrinated, like 100%. That you're taught this stuff when you get online. You're in doc. Don't let nobody talk. Don't let nobody break your line. We work too hard for this. We did this, that, and the third. They beat us up. You ain't finna let nobody. Man, you crazy. Like, the second I gave my life to Jesus, everything is about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And every single person in the sorority can come up against me. I stand boldly with the Holy Spirit. There's nothing. You not. At the end of the day, like, I stand for him. You put your chips where you made. You can work this hard for an organization that can care less about you. Mm -hmm. Care less. And people Care, have died. Don't, don't, people don't have care. died trying to get in. People have literally died trying to get in. Almost Very much. I got a whole book. Okay. So if, for anybody who's well, how do you know this stuff? I read books about it. Okay. I got this one. Look, Walter Kimbrough wrote a whole book. Most of this book talks about hazing within Greek organizations. Mm -hmm. This man mm -hmm. is an alpha who wrote this. Okay. He didn't make that up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hank Newer is the most studied person on hazing in history there has been one hazing death every year with the exception of 2020 i'm not sure what the what the stats are since 2020 but i think 2021 there was at least one or two but every year from like 1950 to 2020 there was at least one hazing death every year now all that wasn't greek life but still hazing is the issue and greeks are a huge like that's uh, a lot of it goes on so this stuff is not just what well, we're picking at Delta or we're picking at BGLO. A lot of this stuff happens in white Greek fraternities and stuff too. Mm -hmm. So we, we're just trying to bring some light to that because it is very serious. And I would hate for somebody to be going through this process, don't know Jesus or else. Why, why would they be subjecting themselves to this if they really had a strong relationship with God? I mean, not to say you, that just because you wouldn't, you, know what I'm you wouldn't like, even need it. You wouldn't even need it. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, with the strong relationship with Jesus Christ, everything that you're, everything that you search for, everything that I was searching for in that sorority is found in him. It's all found in him. Like mm -hmm. all my peace, all my happiness, everything that y'all stated in them quotes that you finna get a Delta, it's all found in me. And they're saying, uh, one person was like, well, how, why expose like um, certain things that you once considered to be sacred? I once considered it to be sacred because I was deceived. Yeah just like you are that's why i once considered it sacred but it's no different from amazing grace how sweet the sound has saved a wretch like me i once was lost but now i'm found was blind but now oh. i see i see now like he removed the veil from my eyes and he told me this is not okay jesus says all those whom i love i rebuke and i chasten rebuke means correct he corrected me Mm -hmm. And thank God for God judging me now. Thank God for telling me, Melissa, this stuff is not okay. Melissa, sin is not okay. Right. You know what I mean? Like taking oaths and kneeling before altars is not okay. That? It's all throughout the Bible. It's talked about in Acts. In Acts, all Paul wrote to were churches who were dealing with Greek idolatry. Mm -hmm. How can you sit up here and have Greek idolatry in this black Greek letter or black Greek letter organization and still claim relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not sacred to me. You know what's sacred to me? My relationship with Jesus. Yeah. That is sacred to me. No organization on this earth is sacred to me because no organization on this earth will ever get me to heaven. Ever. Ever. And if you know who your God is, then serve him. Don't serve another God.
if you know that Jesus Christ that you took and said is your Lord, then if he's your Lord, have you ever asked him yourself that this is okay? Have you ever, because I believe that a lot of people on this chat know him as savior, but they do not understand what it means when you take him as Lord. Mm -hmm. If he is Lord over my life, he is everything to me. That means before I make any decision, I run it by him. That means that every single thing that he tells me to let go of, it goes. Mm -hmm. It goes. You sit up here and say, well, I know what God I serve and I know this, that, and the third. Then why are you saying chance about your peace, love, and happiness you give to Delta? How, how does that make sense? Where is that in the Bible? Especially when Jesus <laughs> if you know said what he's God the prince. Serve. Jesus is the prince of peace. Like, as Christians, <laughs> we don't have to give our peace away. Jesus gives no, us right. peace. <laughs> He is our peace. He's our everything. That you would sit there and think that Jesus is on the sideline clapping you up. <laughs> Talking about, yeah, girl, say it again. Like, no. <laughs> like, he's like, repent and turn from your sin. That is the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ came here on earth. He died a horrible death for us. He rose on the third day for our sin. He took upon himself the sin that literally like the wrath that we should have taken meaning that every single thing that i did you know every single thing that i did to other people i deserved hell for it mm -hmm. hell and he took upon himself that for my sake that i may have eternal life and what you're telling me is that i should go back now and still do those same things that led him to that cross basically mm -hmm. right and my main thing is people like, if you denounce, that's cool, but why expose? But if what you're doing is so good, why are you mad that it's being exposed? <laughs> why are you mad? Yeah. Like, if, if, you're, if what we did was so phenomenal, why are you mad? Why are you mad? Mm -hmm. And then half of the ones that's talking, I pledge. And they ain't even go through half of the stuff I went through. <laughs> let's, 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 let's talk about that. <laughs> let's discuss that. So even in itself, like, Neos, like, half of the ones that I pledged was the ones that didn't even go through half of the process mm -hmm. I went through, period. Which we went through way worse. But I'm the one that administrated the process to you. So I am the ones that's sitting on here literally, like, if I can have the level of boldness that he would call me out, this is the thing. When Jesus Christ calls you and he tells you to come out of something, you come out of it. Mm -hmm. That's it. I don't sit here and argue. I no longer do what I want to do. Half of the people that sit in here caping for this organization have never sat down and said, Jesus, reveal to me if this is even true. Reveal to me. Like, 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 am I wrong? And that's why it said the meek and the humble will inherit eternal life. But the proud like I will oppose the proud because this pride will have you stuck in this level of sin, really thinking that you're going to inherit eternal life, knowing that we just went through a long list of everything that we just said. The fact that you think that all this stuff is right is crazy to me, but that's how you know that we are deceived, deceived, deceived. Like de it's one thing when you know that, that there's right and you know that there's wrong, but people who are underneath deception, literally like they cannot it they're underneath a delusion like they really cannot see how any of this is wrong i was the same way i could not understand how people made videos like this and people okay will you denounce but then don't be doing this that and the third like who are you whether i serve god or should i serve man i serve god i don't serve you i don't care i could care less about your opinion i care about jesus christ's opinion this live is for an audience of one. And it's for one person that might be saved and may come out of this. Mm -hmm. This is for one lost sheep. This ain't for the masses. That's why it says the broad path leads lead mm -hmm. to destruction yeah. and many are on it. But the narrow path leads to light and few find it. Yeah. Narrow path. This is straight. This means that we are to strive to be holy. And we don't strive to be holy essentially to try to be perfect as Christians, right? Because we're not perfect essentially in that type of way, right? 
but we strive to be holy because if Jesus Christ gave his life for my sake that I may have life, I now in return give my life to him. I pledge my life to him. So everything you pledge to Delta, I now pledge to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So the same thing that you're pledging and caping for an organization, I now have that same energy for Jesus. For Jesus. And Jesus is not mentioned nowhere in this doctrine. <laughs> Okay, his name not mentioned. Nothing about him is mentioned. Christian principles is mentioned. You know, so I know that some people have questions, or I don't know if you have more questions, so we can like go to their questions because yeah, we I'm can with. we can give people a few <laughs> minutes. We'll give them a few minutes to uh, round up some questions. Um, but I think this has been really good. I know people mm -hmm. are upset, which we kind of anticipated that, and that's fine. I'll say, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, if, if you hear the, the voice of the Lord today, harden not your heart, this yeah. has actually got grace and mercy on you because obviously you needed to hear this and tomorrow is not promised. You know what I'm it's saying? It's not. It's not promised. We mentioned takeoff earlier. This is one of the richest men probably in America. Maybe not America, mm -hmm. but still. The point is, this is a rich celebrity who had the whole world at his disposal, and he's gone like that. Yeah. And none of that stuff that he accumulated while he was here on Earth, he can't take that with him. You can't take your Delta pen with you to meet the Lord. So you could be right, mad right. at us, but be mad and go research and determine whether or not what we're saying is true. Listen. If you never read this Bible, you, you can't tell me. You can't tell me that um, that it's okay. Yeah. You can't tell me that it's okay because the Bible it's, says it's a lot against the things that go go on in these Greek organizations. And, and so, I'm just gonna read scripture as well. Why yeah. why we wait to gather some some questions? Um, and I'm gonna explain to y'all even through scripture why this was important and why we chose to have this conversation. Right, so. <sighs> I'm just going to go completely just through it just so people understand like what's the purpose and, and, and why we're on here and all this. And I really want, as you listen to this scripture that you really examine your heart, like you don't have to agree with me, but you can't disagree with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You just can't like, it, it, you don't have to agree with me because we're all going to have to reconcile these things with the Lord. So Mark 4, 22 says, for nothing is hidden except to be revealed, nor has anything been secret, but that it would come to light. This is in the Bible, right? Second Corinthians 4, verse 2 says, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, which was done, which I just showed y'all a scripture of the meditation that we have in, in the Delta ritual book. I just showed y'all a meditation where they take 1 Corinthians 13 and deceitfully change the word of God for it to mean Delta. That's Y'all do not understand that you are provoking God to jealousy. It's very serious, right? It says, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God literally in regards to the rituals that we did matthew 15 8 verse 9 says these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me mm. and in vain they worship me teaching as doctrines the commandments of men mm. not of god not of god you draw near to god with your mouth you claim that you love jesus with your mouth you got a bible verse in your in your bio with claiming him as lord in your mouth but he will say depart i never knew you you don't worship him for real because he says why do you call me lord lord but you don't do what i say mm -hmm. you don't obey me you know a God that you've made up in your head, but not the God of the Bible, because there's no way that you have read scripture and you came to these conclusions. That is okay. It's no way. It's no way. And then 1 Thessalonians 5 says, 5.22, it says, flee every appearance of evil. And another version says, stay away from every kind of evil. That means that I flee even the appearance of evil. Mm -hmm. and, and the things that we did were evil. It doesn't matter how good you felt, how much you cried, 
what happened, it was wrong. It was wrong. The stuff we did underground was wrong. The stuff we did above ground, it was wrong. It doesn't matter if you were in either one of the process, it was wrong. The stuff you do afterwards, the stuff you do at the clubs, the stuff you do on the yard, the chants you say, it's wrong. It's wrong. And half of you would never say that in a church. You would never be up here and say, I will take your man and F this mm -hmm. sorority and you don't do it like me and die. You would never say that. So don't sit here in the presence of God talking about it's okay with Jesus. You don't care what Jesus thinks. That's why you on here caping for Delta. You've chose your God. You care what Delta thinks. You don't care what God thinks. Because if so, you have to reconcile this in scripture. Exodus 20 says, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven or above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water or under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations to those who hate me but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments mm -hmm. and keep my commandments. It, I don't literally Isaiah 42, a, I am the Lord. That is my name and my glory. I will not give to another, nor my praise to carve images. You don't give the glory of God to nobody. I don't honor. I don't worship. I don't pledge my loyalty. I don't give my honor. I don't give my love, my peace, my happiness. I don't give it to nobody but Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is who I give it to. Him and him alone is who I choose to serve. Right? I don't bow. I don't worship. I don't, I don't kneel. I don't do none of that. I don't honor past ancestors. I don't honor past founders. I don't honor, we sit up here trying to worship. This ancestor worship is out of hand. Like, I'm just going to say that. You sit up here trying to worship your ancestors, knowing your uncle and your granddaddy and them was drunk and doing all types of stuff. And that's the person you praying to? I don't pray, no. I pray to Jesus Christ and him alone. And I'm just saying like two more. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Mm -hmm. No, the intelligence and the torch of wisdom. No, that's not the light of the world. All these other fraternities and sorority, you're not the light of the world. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Right. Him and him alone. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. So this is what you see happening on this chat. People are choosing their side. You either choose Jesus or you choose Delta. Which one is it? You can't have two masters. You can't sit up here and claim you love Jesus Christ and love Delta. It doesn't work that way. I don't love anybody. I love Jesus. Him. He is my Lord. And that is who I took as Lord over my life. Not just Savior. Not just Savior. Right? And to the oath part. And the oaths and the rituals we took. But I say to you, do not swear at all neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no be no, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. So everybody sitting on here that took an oath to your fraternity and sorority, reconcile that with the word of God. <clears throat> Reconcile it. Reconcile it. <laughs> Reconcile it with the word of God. <laughs> you can't be mad at me. You got to be mad at Jesus. Right? Yeah. Literally. I mean, I, I, and think about this. Like, the, the Greek system is really based on favoritism. Like, there are special people, and then there's people who aren't special. And so that right. in itself is not Christ-like. I mean, again, the Great Commission is about going and getting as many people as you can and bringing them into the kingdom, not selecting a few people and excluding everyone else. That is not, right. Um, right. That, that's just not com compatible with Christianity and with the gospel. So yeah. if, if you're- Oh, giving... somebody said, mm -hmm. somebody said to speak on Christian pastors yeah, or Greeks who was. are Greeks who are pastors, they not Christian, <laughs> period. They're not born again believers. 
There's no way you can claim to have the spirit of God inside of you. You don't have the Holy Spirit in you. And you sit up here claiming that you a pastor, a guy, and you in a fraternity or a sorority. You're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, and I, and, and that's just the truth. I don't, I, I'm not, you're not talking to a sugar coating Christian. You're not talking to, I'm telling you what it is. You're not a pastor. And it talks about in the end of days that people will literally leave sound teaching and sound doctrine and teach, and literally teach doctrine of demons. For real, you're not. And I'm just going to say, he says to judge them by their fruits. I am judging you righteously as a born again believer. And that's why majority of their churches and believers are lukewarm. Mm. That's why majority of them are lukewarm. Why they think that they can be in a sorority, go turn up, talk, say, as an omega or whoever, I'm a nasty this, that, and the third, but then still sit up here and say you love Jesus. No, you are lukewarm. And if you don't repent, you will go to hell. That's what it is. Like, you not you you ain't uh, pick nobody on here that's scared or afraid to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Literally. Yeah. It said, Somebody you will know them by their fruits. If you love me, you keep my commandments. And his commandments are very clear. I just stated scripture. So if you examine yourself, and it says in Hebrews to examine yourself to see whether or not you are part of the faith. Mm -hmm. If you examine yourself and you examine your fruit, you have to answer to that. Mm -hmm. But to me, you're not no Christian if you look exactly like the world. Mm -hmm. What makes you a Christian is that you believe in faith through literally for what Jesus did on that cross, that you believe in grace through faith that Jesus Christ died for your sins. And then on top of that, you show fruits of your salvation. You show fruits that you have repented. The first way to be saved is to repent. How in the world can you literally claim that you have faith in Jesus Christ when you look like your old man? Mm. How? Mm. He said the host never experienced Greek life, so it seems she does not. Bro, what? Who is that a girl? Like, since what I are you talking so. about? I, I played so. Spring 2007 <laughs> in Delta She's New. She's talking about I was me. that She's Delta. Talking about me. Oh, you. Oh. She's talking about but I me. Do. Oh. I, and you don't have oh. to be a part of something to be able to recognize the issues with it. That's why I've right. done my research. You know, I, I can read a book. <laughs> I Like, I didn't document this. Walter Kimbrough, who was an alpha, documented this, right? Right. So people who are scholars on the subject are saying these things happen within these organizations. I can go based on the research that I've done. And I know the Bible, like, I don't have to be a member of the KKK to know that racism is wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't, have, to, I don't have to be a Jehovah's Witness to know that they worship a false god. That's not the god. Yo. All, I, all you have to know is know the truth to know error, okay? I don't have to have ever used counterfeit money to know what real money feels like. I know what real money feels like. Therefore, I know what a counterfeit looks like. And that's what we're talking about tonight. Very much so. And it's, and it's this attitude that people want to make other people disqualified to talk about subjects. Who are you? Mm -hmm. Who are you? Who are you to disqualify somebody to talk about absolutely anybody? Like you, she can talk about whatever she choose. Like we're in this society. Well, if you not, if you a man, you can't talk about abortion. If you this, you can't mm -hmm. talk about that. But you be up on here putting black squares for police injustice <laughs> and, and up here, <laughs> like you ain't never went through it a lick a day in your life talking about yeah. your ancestors and ancestors and them what they went through and talking about that you be on here talking about sex trafficking never went through it you be like come on like we yeah. all are able to discuss whatever we're able to discuss mm -hmm. and she is able to discuss this mm -hmm. and even if she isn't i am so let's right. reconcile that's that. why we go to like witnesses. i'm speaking this, this is how this is how people make this is how people determine cases, right? You get witnesses, people who have experienced it, right? Like I would, if, right. if any of y'all want to come up here, I can interview you and, and ask you some of these same questions. And I know half y'all be lying, which again should be, <laughs> should be a red flag. Jesus said, don't lie. Okay. Yeah. Don't lie. <laughs> this one guy keeps saying that God used David and he <laughs> killed somebody. Okay, but do you know the full scripture? David <laughs> repented. <laughs> like you are, do you know that? Like David judged. also received David also received chastisement and judgment from God for what he did. Literally, J David lost his child for sleeping with his best friend's wife and for killing him. I don't know if it was his nine best months friend, after <laughs> his child. Nine months after his child was born, the prophet Nathan came to David to administer judgment on David. Yeah. And David repented. 
which is why God called David a man after his own heart. We must repent. God can use anybody. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9, it talks about, and such were some of you, but you were washed, yeah. you were made clean. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. You can be a former murderer, a former adulterer, which is what David was. He was former, but he came to God. He humbled himself. And against you and you alone have I sinned. And that's what I did. I came to God and I humbled myself to him. And against you and you alone have I sinned. I took these, I took these oaths. I said these words, God, please forgive me and have mercy on me. That is how you humble yourself before God. Stop trying to sit up here and act like God is okay with unrepentant sin. It's not supported anywhere in the Bible. Yeah. Nowhere. Yeah. I Like we misquote. It's like the people who put John 3, 16, but did you read 17 to the end? <laughs> like it, it's like the Bible is full of scripture. Yeah. Full. Right? You know what I mean? Like that's my main thing. Book. 66 books and i mean some of these comments are showing us that y'all have not opened this bible maybe ever open it okay yeah, and then talk yeah. to me about how wrong we are we did we see any more all questions? right because come on questions it got ask hot your question ask your question <laughs> ask, oh, ask your questions i want to ask i want to answer all of them because i think we, how much more time we all had a much more time right we don't. We're about to call it a night. I did want to answer this question. What was the name of the books about hazing? Okay, Black Greek 101 by Walter M. Kimbrough. A lot of a lot of the folks in the live chat probably know or in the comments. Y'all probably familiar with that book. Y'all, hazing is dangerous and it's bad, okay? And then this one, Hazing by Hank Neuer. I know all of this is backward. This was really good, too. And Hank Neuer has several other books on the subject as well. Mm -hmm. And that book, African American Fraternities and Sororities, was a game changer. I mean, it that was a, that book is huge. And again, it's got footnotes, okay? I don't read books without footnotes and notes and, you know, primary mm -hmm. sources. So it's not just, so well, somebody said, somebody said, no, like, these are, these are documented books, all right? So if you want to know more about Greek life and do your own research, then I would definitely recommend checking those out. Why not just leave in peace and return the items to Delta? Why expose the secrets and read from the rituals and handbooks? We we already talked about that at the beginning, but I'll let you answer that. Yeah, again. Um, Chi Chi, Mommy, um, I think that's her name. Um, God tells us to expose the deeds mm -hmm. of darkness. Um, just like when you become a Christian, he tells you to go and spread the gospel and spread the great commission we literally are also called to pull people out of sin mm -hmm. now you have free will and you have a choice whether you want to stay and whatever you want to stay in but when you stand before god he will run this conversation back before you and he will say i warned you so that is your choice but that's why we expose it because if god has corrected me on something that has a, that will affect my salvation right he has corrected me and told me to come out of that it's almost the most unloving thing in the world if i was like yeah but y'all stay in it no i love you i love even mm -hmm. the people on here that's you know persecuted or you know saying whatever they got to say i don't wish it for my worst enemy like for them to go to hell i don't wish it you know for nobody and because i know what god saved me from i now devote my life to salvation for other people now can we save everybody no but we are called to put the information out there. That's why if you're a former fornicator, you're gonna talk about how sex outside of marriage is bad. If you're a former adulterer, you're gonna talk about how that's not okay. If you're a former drunk, you're gonna talk about drinking is not good. And this is why, this is what the Lord said. If you're former from a sorority or a fraternity and you took demonic Masonic oaths and rituals that's against the Bible, you're going to tell people also not to do those things. Right? Like, that is the purpose. You know what I mean? So, yeah. All right. Well, Jane, I think as Jane Lisa says, she's late on the podcast, but what would you say to current members who say they're a Christian? It's very hard to reach them because they really think they're Christian. Before you hop in, I'll say this. I think it's possible that someone could be a Christian and still be in these organizations but I think that there's plenty of people who are in the organizations who are not Christians, and that's why they don't see all of the issues with what's going on. Because some folks just 
like you might have got saved while you were in it. Now you're like, man, I'm still a Delta. You know, should I renounce? Should I denounce or whatever? But if you see people who have no fruit of salvation, I mean, point them to, I will point them to scriptures like, let me see, what did I write down? First Corinthians 6, 6, do, do not be deceived. People who do all these things like sexual immorality, blase, blase. If you do all this stuff and say you're a Christian, you're lying. You, you're deceived. So that's how I will answer that question. But Melissa, you go ahead yeah. and hop in. And I, and I, yes, and I understand and I agree because like, I understand that there are a lot of people in spirit and truth. They really are struggling. Like they really don't, they're ignorant, right? So to people who are ignorant, they really don't know that this stuff was wrong. You got to understand, I pledged in 2007. Like even when I came to Jesus, I gave my life to Jesus Christ in 2018. I did not remember all the stuff I did in 2007. So I do believe that there are still people that are in sororities or fraternities, right? Like that they don't, remember everything that they did it's not that they wouldn't renounce it or denounce it but they it just hasn't been brought to their memory right so that's the thing like i do believe that there are innocent people who are still in there that god hasn't really like revealed it to them but for those who it has been revealed to and they've been given the opportunity to repent i don't know i don't believe that you're still a christian if you, you still choose to willfully like staying something that's already been exposed. That's like Jesus Christ telling me that having sex outside of marriage is wrong, but I'm like, bet I'm still do it. No, like you have a choice. Like either you're gonna choose to serve God because you claim that he was your Lord, or you're gonna choose to serve yourself that you are now taking as Lord, right? So yeah, to me, that's the, the main Yeah, because I, I know folks who like, they admit like, hey, I pledged in college and all that stuff I did is wrong. Have they officially denounced? Like, I think technically some of them are still on the books, but they don't participate in any of it. And they'll say, like, this is wrong. So, so I think there is, you know, some nuance there. <laughs>